Hello and welcome to the Rolling Cloud Academy. I am Nutrix the Synth Guy and today we will have fun learning how to use the partials in Xenology Pro. Come on. To have access to Xenology, you just have to open it in your favorite DAW. Today I'm using Studio One and I'm gonna have on the side an oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer so we'll see the content of the frequencies being created by the sound that we're gonna be explaining today. The synthesis of Xenology Pro uses the concept of partials that has been in the Roland universe of synthesis since, I'm guessing, the D50. Now, it's still using four partials, but it's using also all the different options of synthesis oscillators that you can find today and a lot of different filters also. So let's go through the whole principle of this. Each of the partials have basically the whole structure of one single synthesizer, meaning you have the oscillator where you have your waveform being generated either from PCM, VCA, PCM sync, super saw, or noise. You also have uh, two LFOs available. You have a pitch envelope and pitch control. You have a filter with its own envelope and you have an amplitude envelope and EQ at the end. So let's go through that. PCM, basically a list of samples that have been recorded and edited and prepared by Roland to play. These could be piano sounds, it could be anything. They're recorded sounds. What's interesting is that some of them are not actually musical sounds. They're more of manipulating the instrument or playing the instrument. So it could be hammer of a piano. It could be a pedal on the piano uh, also that you just hear it move. So it could be mechanical noises that makes it more natural for an instrument to sound. So there's a lot of options here. And keep in mind that also you have some of the sounds are called left and right, L and R. So you can actually load one here and load the other one here. So then you have your stereo sound. So they're basically stereo recordings. And that's just one partial. You also have VA, which is virtual analog, with different shapes and form you can play from. And they have different ways of sounding. Each of them, they have their own sound, and they have their own frequencies content. All of them can be shaped with a pulse width, even if they're not pulse shaped. And all of them also have access to the LFO depth for the pulse width. So that's pretty cool. It gives you a lot of options for the sound of it. And FAT is... Again, gives you that analog, you know, nice warm sound you can play with. You also have a little thing here called analog feel. Um, if you go too much with this, basically you have a out of tune old synthesizer. Or if you go close to this, you might have just some variation of your synthesizer. And this is for the entire synthesizer. You also have two LFOs, of course, with the classic wave shape plus some bizarre shaped ones, which are pretty awesome to use. And you have the last one, which is pretty awesome. It's a step modulator. So you can draw the step you want. And to use this, we'll go right into the filter because I could assign the filter. I'm gonna cut some frequencies with the cutoff here and the resonance here, a little bit of resonance. And I'm gonna bring the depth of the LFO2 in. And now what I hear is the movement here. But think of something that's something really cool is that you can actually go in. Maybe this is better. You can go in here and actually take this one and change the shape of it. I want this. I want this. I want that and I want uh, this one. So that's a really powerful way of using this as a step modulator. And again, this could be assigned to anywhere that is LFO2 assignable. And this is also available in LFO1. Now to change the speed of an LFO, 
let's say I'm going to use this one instead of LFO2. You can go here and you can just click on it and move this. It's going to be slower. You have the same information you can do here. Or you can go faster. It can be tempo synced. Now it is in tempo information, synced to the, the tempo of your DAW. You have a key trigger. Every time I press the key, it re-triggers from the beginning of the LFO. You're always going to have the same movement. If you take it off, that's going to take the LFO where it's at. Fading time, how much time you want it before it actually becomes a full movement. Delay is how much time you, you want it before it actually takes some action. It's not too fast, it's like, like this. If you just put delay and no fade time, see, waits, starts to oscillate. But the fade time, change it, so this is going to be the fade time now. Fade time longer, delay time longer. And then you go, why would I need that? Well, you know, if you want to do some vibrato, let's say I put some zero here, okay? We open up the filter. So we want to send to the pitch instead. That's too much. That's a bit hedgy. But let's say you want it to come in later. You hear it coming later on, especially if you put in monophonic. Put some fading on it. Okay, so it's more natural in this case. So again, these can be add up in a way that's going to be useful. Offset if you want it to be oscillating over higher than the pitch you're playing. offsetting the movement. The filter, you have different shapes. I'll take this one so we hear the movement. You have the pan pass, the low pass. Of course, you've got 24 dBs or 12, so a four pole or a two pole. Resonance, either you bring it up like this or you click on it and you can go up and down, left and right for the cutoff. High pass filter, peaking filter, low pass filter 2. If you look at the slope, you see the slope is like this. Low pass filter 3, the slope is different. So they have a different sound. Then you've got the VCF. So this works in the way of a lot of analog synthesizer used to work. If you bring the resonance up, everything else goes down in volume and it becomes self oscillating. And what you hear is basically the resonance. So it's more of an analog reaction to this. You have the envelope and the envelope for the amplifier. It's basically the same. If you move it, you go well, attack, decay, sustain. Well, if I want another one, you click again here and you move it. Keep in mind you have T2, L2. So you're already at time two, level two. So you would have a tag decay sustain release, but it's not exactly that because if you click on it again and you move it, you'll find that you have another time and level. So you've got a certain level to level zero. You go to this volume, this level, and you can then go back up. You can create these weird shapes that you cannot create with a tag decay sustain release. Let's bring down the LFO one and bring up the envelope. And you get the same thing here with the amplitude. You can also do something that goes in, but what's bizarre, you can do this. You go, why would I have this? 
And what is this? Well, wait a sec. I'll turn on the second partial. Well, let's bring down the LFO. But you hear right away. That's the time before the second one works. Now, if you want to see the different amplitude at the same time, you click amplitude and you only see amplitudes here. If you click LFO, you only see LFOs, the four partial at the same time. And amplitude here, you see that the first one comes in later. If I put like that, the two comes in at the same time. Put it there. So this one plays right away and this one is waiting until it gets to that time. And the wait can be very long. So there's different ways to use it. And that's where the logic of using the partials comes into play. Of course, if you want to use it in a traditional synthesis, well, you can have just these two synthesizer sound and you have two oscillator synthesizer. If you're not sure about anything in Xenology Pro, if you're asking how does this work or what is this for or how to use PCM, or you go into menu and you go into help, you're going to have a nice PDF explaining everything in it. It explains differences between a sync Ring, XMOD2, normal XMOD, and the structure window. You also have a control over sync, ring, cross modulation, and cross modulation too. For this to work, it has to be VA or PCM sync. If it's not, this won't work. Okay? I'll do another video just on these features because it takes more time to explain how it works and why you would like to have them. But it's really interesting to go deep into them. And if you want to play with them and you have more control, you would have to go into Pro Edit. And in Pro Edit, go into Structure, and that's where you're going to find the ring level and the cross modulation volumes. If you want to have more control than what you have on screen, the Pro Edit probably has the feature you're looking for. It's hidden somewhere. So you need to think of this either as a single synth with four different you know, oscillators with each more a lot of control, or see the four of them as one instrument. Let's actually show you one reason you would have all of this into one sound. There's something about this last part called range control. In the range control, you're basically deciding the section on the keys from left to right that the partial one will be in, and the velocity from top to bottom, or bottom to top, from zero velocity to, in this case, 89, for that sample to play. So the first partial only plays under 89. And if I press harder, I'm pressing now, there's nothing playing. The second one, if you hold like this, this one only comes in gradually and becomes really full potential at 90 and up to 109 and then stops. So takes over. And the last one, the third one, that one is more of a, when you hit hard, you hear, you hear the, the hammer hitting the sound differently. But if I press soft, it doesn't play. If you look at the keys on the screen at the bottom here, you see I'm playing, it doesn't work because it's, it's under 110 velocity. If I use the three of them and turn them on, I can actually... So I'm kind of switching between three different samples. So it gives you an example why you would use this. And again, all of these three of them can have control over pitch, oscillator, LFO, and filter and amplitude, depending on what you want to do. Thank you for watching. Put your comments below.